to a demonstration for a paper bag steam activity that I am going to show you today. This activity is to make a bookmark with a 3D printed loom. And to do that, I uh, will show you the techniques. But first, a bit of background about um, 3D printing and where you can find paper bag steam. So first off, um, this is an activity that you can get a kit for, uh, including your uh, loom that we 3D print in the Creativity Commons that is inside the Nanaimo Harbor Front Branch. So you can come down and get your um, very own 3D printed loom with your library card at uh, Nanaimo Harbor Front Library, which is in downtown Nanaimo at 90 Commercial Street. And upstairs is the Creativity Commons where we have all kinds of learning tools for hands-on making. And that includes uh, 3D printers. So it, it prints the loom using um, heat, so it heats up and a filament comes out of the 3D printer once it's heated and using uh, the computer file it um, prints what it's instructed to do. So find all kinds of other designs on this uh, open source web platform called Thingiverse. So a uh, big thanks to uh, creators on Thingiverse, and you can even design your own 3D prints using something called Tinkercad, and you can find more information in the links provided here. So uh, now that we've done a bit of an introduction about the loom itself, we are gonna get started with the craft activity. So this is a STEAM activity. STEAM stands for Science, Technology, engineering, art, and math. And those are the uh, core principles that we're using to uh, teach young people uh, 21st century learning skills. And so today we are gonna be learning all about um, engineering to make our own designs. Um, we're gonna have to use our own um, thinking to come up with um, how we want to design our bookmark and we're going to be using art and you might need some math in order to um, make your bookmark uh, work properly. So uh, let's go over what you are going to need for this craft. So uh, first off you are going to need a 3D printed loom like I already explained. We can print one for you or you can pick up one in the Creativity Commons, and uh, it will most likely come already um, uh, with the uh, warp threads already put in for you, uh, and these warp threads are uh, made from yarn. So that's another thing you're going to need to, for this craft is some yarn. Uh, we will provide some for you, but um, you might want to also uh, provide some of your own to have more variety in terms of colors and thickness. And um, you are also going to want to um, maybe try some different materials for this craft. So you might want to find some fabric that you can cut into strips or some pipe cleaners to um, use instead of yarn. So these are some alternative ideas for your materials to make your woven bookmark. So I have an example here that I'll just show you. So this is um, a bookmark that I made on the 3D printed loom. You can um, design it however you choose. This is just one example of um, what you can make uh, with the loom and uh, the other materials that you'll need is uh, you don't have to but it's helpful to use a uh, plastic fork for combing down your stitches um, you need some scissors for cutting the yarn your kit uh, will come with um, this uh, stitch holder tool which I'll show you how to use in a moment 
And then this is a uh, winding tool to put your yarn around and go in and out of the uh, stitches on the loom. So these are also 3D printed and so you can um, get them uh, with your loom in the Creativity Commons. So, to start off today, uh, the first step that we are going to go over is uh, we are going to, if you don't already have the warp um, in your um, loom, you're just going to want to wind it around each comb in your um, loom. So uh, I have affixed here each end with a little piece of tape so that um, the warp thread stay uh, in place. And you want to pull them tight enough that they're going to stay uh, in place and not kind of fall all over the place. So you want them to be a little bit tight but not super tight. So once you have your warp threads, I'm going to show you uh, how to get started with weaving. All right, so uh, now we are going to go over some basics of how to weave on our 3D printed loom. So today I'm going to show you some really basic te techniques. There's lots more that you can learn about weaving from a really great tool that um, I'll tell you about at the end of this video for more learning using the library's resource databases. So uh, to get started, we are going to take a piece of yarn. So um, here we have a um, pretty, pretty long piece of yarn. You can start with a longer piece if you wanna do one solid color for your bookmark. I'm gonna do a bit of a rainbow here. So I'm just gonna cut it maybe about here. So it's not a very long piece of yarn, but um, it is um, enough to get us started. So now that we have our yarn, I'm just gonna show you how to put in this um, stitch holder tool. So this is gonna hold our stitches up to make it easier to go in and out of each stitch. So to, to put it in place, we're just gonna go underneath the front facing stitches and we are just going to comb the stitches in an upward motion with the slats that are already there, like so. And you can leave it like this uh, or you can turn it the opposite direction um, I find it easier to hold them up um, not in the slats and on the flat uh, facing end of our comb or stitch holder piece. Um, it might pop out a bit, but um, totally your preference um, how, how you want to um, position it. I prefer the flat end because it actually holds the stitches up higher, uh, I found, with using this particular loom. So I'm going to leave my uh, stitch holder tool like so, and I'm going to take our other tool, which is a yarn holder, and I'm just going to not use it quite yet. Uh, I'm just going to put it right over here, and I'm going to show you how to do the first row, and then we're going to use our tool. So. To begin, we are going to uh, just start going in and out of the stitches, being sure to leave the end piece in place um, so the warp uh, threads stay in place. And we're just going to go under the first uh, warp and over the second and under the third. You could um, purchase a tapestry needle if that makes it easier for you, but I'm just gonna use my fingers today and show you as best I can. So we're gonna go over and then under the fifth and over the sixth and under the seventh and over and under. Now you can 
see if you're doing it right because you should begin to see an over under pattern merging. And we're gonna go over under until we reach the very end. So once we reach the end, we're gonna pull our yarn piece all the way through. So we have a little bit of a tail on the end and we're just gonna leave that there and uh, we're gonna leave it so that it's um, a little bit higher up so that when we finish the piece, we have a bit of leeway, uh, a little bit of a, a bit of a fringe so that we can tie our end. So we wanna make sure that we're not um, pulling our stitches down to the very bottom of our loom. We're just leaving it um, about um, a few centimeters above the end. Uh, you can also put a piece of cardboard at the bottom of your loom to ensure that that um, uh, safe space is reserved for uh, the fringe at the end of our project. Uh, so um, I'm just leaving it there and we are going to start going back um, the other way with our yarn. So in order to make this a little bit easier, we can use this tool here. And I'm just gonna wrap the yarn around our little tool here. And we're just gonna start by going over the stitch, the um, weft, sorry, the warp um, yarn. So we're gonna go over the warp yarn that we just went under and we're gonna do the opposite of what we did all the way the other direction now. So we're gonna go over and under and over and under. This activity is that we are only using these stitches um, in the front of our loom. These stitches in the back here we wanna make sure that they stay empty because we are gonna be cutting them once we're done our project in order to make this fringe on the top of our bookmark, we're gonna use the uh, weft stitches from the back of the loom. And the same with, you can see this the little fringe at the bottom. We wanna make sure we have enough at the bottom. Uh, that's why we've left this space here so that we have um, the ability to tie the weft stitches together at the end of our project. So uh, we're gonna continue going back and forth. Okay, so everyone, if you keep weaving like I've been showing you, uh, you'll eventually get um, a bunch more of uh, weaving, uh, the basic weaving. Uh, you can see the rainbow started to take shape with this rainbow yarn that I'm using. And um, I've started to do a bit of a design so I've counted um, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of the uh, weft stitches, and I've just gone in and out. And you can see here there's another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the other side. So I took 14 and I divided it in two, and I, you, what do you get? Seven. So I've put half of the um, yarn in this purple. So I've just gone in and out, in and out um, with the purple yarn over the seven weft stitches. And now I'm gonna do the other half or other seven in this red yarn. So I'm just gonna show you how to do that. You can do it evenly or you can divide it however you want and make your own design and um, use math to help you make different geometric shapes. Uh, so here we've got um, a square. So to do the red, I'm just gonna do the exact same that I was showing you before. Uh, we're gonna leave our tool here just for a second. And I'm just gonna show you, so I'm gonna start off where the purple started. So um, I'm just gonna go under, over, under, over, under, over, under just like we were doing with the rainbow yarn. And I'm gonna pull it all the way through to the end and leave our little tail, which you can weave in later. And 
I'm just gonna tuck it to the back of our weaving. And Okay, so when you're all done, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. And uh, we've got a bit of a tail. I wanted to make them both even, so I've got a bit of extra of the red left over. You can just leave that um, there or you can trim it a bit, but I um, recommend you leave a bit of a tail so that you can um, tie it in at the end of your project designs you can also use different materials so I'm just gonna quickly show you how you can add um, pipe cleaners uh, to your design so you can cut the pipe cleaners to two different lengths the green one and demonstrate for you so we're going under over under over under over under under, over, under, all the way across. I'm gonna slide it all the way through, leave a bit of a tail just like we've been doing. We're gonna slide it down so it's matching up with the rest of our piece. And we're gonna keep going for one more so you should have about enough to do two rows with the pipe cleaner. There we've got our two rows with our green pipe cleaner. And we're just going to leave that there and trim the end a bit. So we've still got a bit of an end that at the end we'll be able to fold it over and tuck it into the back of our bookmark. So I also wanted to show you how to cut some strips of fabric. So if you just got any fabric lying around, you'll just take some scissors and we are just going to cut a bit of uh, the fabric out uh, in a strip. Uh, you can decide how thick you want to make your strip. Uh, depending uh, on what kind of uh, look you're going for, if you're going for more of a chunky look or if you're going for more of a thin and narrow look, I'm going to cut it about a centimeter wide and you can do it zigzag, uneven, even, it's totally up to you how you want to design it. Getting to the end of your bookmark uh, design on the loom, you're going to want to remove this tool. It's going to make it a lot easier to put your yarn um, onto the loom. And so you're going to want to um, not um, go any further than um, maybe about a centimeter um, from the end of your looms to ensure that we have space to um, tie the bottom of our piece. So, it's very helpful. This is a very common mistake and it's okay to make mistakes. We can learn from them. So, to make sure that we have enough space at the end, I've pushed these stitches up a bit and I'm only going to go to about here with the yarn. Now you can see I've added a few more uh, rows of yarn to our uh, end of our bookmark and I've left a good amount of headspace for us to 
uh, take the yarn off of the loom. So I'm going to show you that next. So the first thing we are going to do is um, we are going to cut the yarn. Um, first we'll take the tape off um, that's holding uh, this piece to the side. So we'll just take that piece of tape off and then we are going to cut uh, down the uh, side here um, so that we've got a bunch of uh, live open weft stitches for us to tie together. So I'm just gonna cut them off slowly and as we do that we're gonna tie them. So I've just cut a couple and I'm just gonna tie them together and we're gonna tie it once and tie it twice and make a nice little knot there so that we've knotted our first two together and then we'll do the next two pieces that we've cut of our weft and we'll just tie it and you don't want to tie it too tight because you don't want to scrunch up your design so you'll just want to tie it tight enough so that you see you're getting the knots um, and the fringe going at the bottom of our bookmark. So once you've tied all your ends together, you're going to want to gather up um, all these loose ends into a sort of uh, triangle kind of um, piece. Um, and you're going to want to tie a piece of yarn around this, and just like I've done in this sample one here. So you can see here, gathered up all of the fringe and tied it with a piece of yarn. So we're going to do that here as well. So you can see here that I have knotted the ends, two ends and these two ends all the way along. We have knots, each two weft threads I have tied twice to make a knot all the way across our bookmark. And you can either leave it long and dangly like this, if that's what you so prefer, or you can trim it. Um, and you can then use your bookmark for all the great books you're going to read this year in 2022. Oh, thanks so much for joining me today. We've completed our bookmark here and uh, I will uh, now tell you about a really great resource called Creative Bug, which I will link to uh, for this video. So you can find all kinds of uh, weaving and other craft uh, tutorials and uh, courses so that you can take your weaving to the next level or you can learn a whole new craft, uh, whatever you want to discover with this free resource available to you with your library card. Thanks so much again for joining me today for this paper bag steam activity using a 3D printed loom to make a bookmark.